For any of us, and for the disgraced ex-president in particular, it's one thing to be accused of a crime and rail against that or even be charged, but to be a convicted felon, to be found guilty by a jury of your peers of a serious federal offense, that could be something else entirely. Nobody knows in the eyes of the law and perhaps in the court of public opinion, even in this moment in our politics. Obviously, no one knows what the jury is going to decide. That decision will be up to them, and any decision is a long way off. But politically speaking, it's something Trump's been worried about for a long time, and it is at least worth exploring what could happen should Trump be found guilty in this case, in this trial set to start Monday in the state of New York. Joining our conversation is the executive director of Republican Voters Against Trump and publisher of The Bulwark, Sarah Longwell. Donnie and Al are still here. Um, Sarah, what do, you, what do you think about those those questions. Yeah, look, I think that uh, when it comes to, it's so interesting, right? In the primary, when Donald Trump, all of his court and legal problems happened, that helped him, right? That helped to create this rally around Trump effect. Uh, but now going into the general election, he's got to move and attract a different type of voter. And those are the kinds of voters who do not want their president to be a convicted felon. Now, one of the things that's been helping Trump is that the sheer volume of his legal troubles create this phenomenon where voters, they kind of feel like it's white noise, like they can't tell one court case from another. And each of the court cases have all these mini dramas associated with them. Then there's the civil trials. And so it's all... Uh, you know, very complicated for an average person to follow. But as we get into individual cases, uh, then the public has to sort of tune in um, and start to make sense of each case individually. Now, Republicans, I think, are glad this is the case that's going first because, you know, they're going to have the whole right wing infotainment media ecosystem sort of ramped up to say, Porn star, porn star, porn star, this is unserious. Uh, this is just a witch hunt. Um, but I think the extent to which uh, a conviction, a real conviction that's handed down about, you know, passing bad checks um, uh, or, or, you know, doing this sort of business fraud, uh, anytime somebody is a convicted felon, it is not going to impact a huge number of voters, I think, because a lot of Trump supporters baked in, but it can impact that critical margin right now of voters that we kind of call the double haters, people who are kind of down on Biden, but they're also kind of down on Trump. A lot of those voters are still trying to figure out who do I dislike more? Who do I really not want to be in the White House again? And I think that uh, having somebody convicted of a felony who is your president, I think that's one of the things that could push some people over the edge. Chris Christie's campaign during the primaries, Donnie, had some polling that, that suggested that, exactly what Sarah's saying, a, a, in a general election, being a convicted felon is, is no good. And to Sarah's point, no one has run against Trump or has, has put a message before the country that says, this is the only trial that's going to happen. Merrick Garland was too slow. Yeah. Jack Smith didn't have enough time and the Supreme Court got involved. And it's about cheating. So, you know, whatever happens, he's either going to be found that he cheated in a criminal way or not. Well, in one of the most recent major polls, 25 percent of Republicans said if he gets convicted, they would not mm -hmm. vote for him. That's a mm -hmm. huge swath. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. a, that's a big deal. The other thing that's going to happen if he gets convicted is Trump has always run on being a winner. And if you really think about the last six elections that he's been attached to, he's lost as far as I'm not saying his individual elections, but everything mm -hmm. is on a diet. He keeps losing every one of these to throw it out. He's lost the civil case. And America likes a winner. Mm -hmm. And you not only do you come out a convicted felon, you come out a loser, which is very different than Donald Trump has always been. Everything is about winning. And so you're a convicted felon. You're a loser. Uh, I think that sticks. And I think people also at the end vote for what affects them. And they kind of go, do I want a president who's going to be fighting and pardoning and this and appeals and it, like, like who's going to be watching the store? And I think you put all those things together and I think it does have a real effect. You know, I also think I, I, I have never I know this is the conventional wisdom that, that this case is the weakest. I think this case is the Trumpiest. And Trump's running on the facts in the two criminal cases. He's running on what he's charged with in the election interference case. He's honoring the insurrectionists at his rallies. And he's running Great on point. being able to, because of the Presidential Records Act, take whatever he damn well pleases. He's not running on having sex with a porn star while he was married and paying her to keep quiet 10 days before the 2016 election right after Access Hollywood tape. These are the only facts. 
he doesn't embrace and run on. No, he doesn't embrace and run on them. And it's very difficult for him to explain this uh, because if he wasn't running for president, this is where the election interference uh, becomes a problem. If he wasn't running for president, Donald Trump would have laughed and went on an Imerson show or, or, or somebody and bragged about, yeah, I got women, I got girls. This is what he does. The only reason he would do this is because he was running for president, which is election mm -hmm. interference. And then you deal with the dates of the payoffs, you deal with all of mm -hmm. this. Uh, then a jury sitting there saying, this doesn't make sense. So then going to your question of the election, now I'm sitting in middle America and there are, we're talking about it just he's convicted. We're not talking about when the DNC and others start running commercials. Are you telling your kid that it doesn't matter that you're a felon, you can be president of the United States. Mm. When you start really coming out and get a guy like Donnie to, to cut your commercials, now I'm thinking about, do I really want to send that message to my daughters or my grandson that it doesn't matter what you do, you can be president of the United States? He's convicted of doing this now. Think about messages over the next, Michael thinks it's going to be six weeks, but three weeks for the jury and then another three weeks mm -hmm. for the trial. Um, so that takes us through mid-June. So between now and then, you're going to see two messaging. The only messaging you're going to see from Trump is, they're out to get me, they're out to get me. Mm -hmm. He's not going to be able to campaign in the way he wants. And you're going to see, on the other side, Biden saying he killed Roe v. Wade, the insurrection. Um, the economy is great. Obviously, inflation is a number. But w this takes us almost a month away from the conventions. Mm -hmm. Like, this is going to be a large swath of what I'll call the communication, you know, uh, universe mm -hmm. that he, no matter what he does, he will be defined over the next six weeks as someone who's trying to be convicted of a crime. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.